Okay, so next we're going to consider the polynomial x4 plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And we've got all of these terms here are real. Um, I've also been given what a couple of the, the roots are already. So we already know that uh, 1 plus i and 1 minus 2i uh, are zeros. Um, we use this fact here. If 1 plus i is a root, then 1 minus i is also a root. And if 1 minus 2i is a root, then 1 plus 2i is a root as well. So we've actually got uh, all four of the roots already. Um, and then uh, the next step is, is just a case of, um, kind of algebraic uh, manipulation. So I can write these four roots as x minus 1 plus i. That's one of the roots. Another root is going to be x minus 1 minus i. And then it's probably easiest to work out this pair of brackets on their own. And then also I'm going to have x minus 1 minus 2i. That's going to be one of the brackets. Then one of the other brackets is going to be x minus 1 plus 2i. So basically um, my polynomial will be these four brackets multiplied together. Like I said if we kind of take them two at a time it probably makes it slightly easier to do. So let's let's multiply out that first double bracket. Um, if we do that and I'll leave this for you to check. We should end up with x squared minus 2x plus 2. And if we end up with this one, we should end up with uh, x squared minus 2x plus Five. And basically, what you should notice is um, when we multiply complex conjugates together, the imaginary part will disappear in effect. Um, and like I said if you if you actually multiply these brackets, it's probably easiest when you do this to keep the brackets in there, and then to simplify right at the end. So keep, so do x times x, x times all of this negative bracket. All of this negative bracket times x, all of this negative bracket times all of this negative bracket, and then simplify afterwards. And anyway, we should end up with with those two things there. Um, and then well, once we've done that, that's the hard part. Um, we now need to actually work out um, the final polynomial x squared minus 2x plus 2. And we're going to times in all that by x squared minus 2x plus 5 and if we again crunch through all the algebra the final answer should be x4 minus 4x cubed plus 11x squared minus 14x plus 10 okay so this question, so we, we, we're given seven marks, so we'd be given about seven minutes in the exam. All they're really testing here is the knowledge, this fact here, that we know that um, if this is a root, then the complex conjugate is also a root. But the main thing that they're testing is really just can we work with this kind of algebra, so just kind of crunching through um, quite a lot of algebraic manipulation. Okay, question. Uh, the next question we look at the complex numbers z1, which is 2 minus 2i, and z2 is 1 minus i root 3, and they're represented by the points a and b on the Arkin diagram, where o is the origin. Uh, first thing that they want to do is find a, b, and then we're going to calculate a or b once we've done that. Um, whenever you get this kind of question, wherever possible, try and just do some kind of sketch. 
to kind of show yourself what's happening. Um, if we look at this, we've got Z1 is 2 minus 2i. So let's actually put this on here. So that's 2, that's minus 2. So that's the point A. So this is the imaginary axis here. This is the real axis here. And then the other point that we've got is 1 minus root 3. So there's 1 root 3 is going to be somewhere like that. And there we go. And the question is actually asking us for the length AB. So it's asking us to find AB. Well, yeah, in effect, it wants us to find the length of AB. Uh, now we've got it sketched like that. Hopefully, it's a little bit easier to see. If I basically make a triangle here, um, I'm going to be using. I can just use uh, Pythagoras's theorem. Let's just sketch out that triangle so it's a bit easier to see. The distance between there is just going to be one. The distance between these two is going to be two minus root three. And if I'm trying to find the length of AB, I'm just going to be using Pythagoras. So it's going to be one squared plus two minus root three squared. And I'm going to square all of that. Okay, so if I again, if I simplified that, if I get rid of that squared bracket, I should finally end up with something that looks a bit like this: 88 minus 4 root 3. Uh, no, actually, I shouldn't have an 88 there. Um, I was wondering why that looked a, a little bit large. Uh, that should just be, uh, that looks a bit better. Yeah, it should be 8 uh, minus 4 root 3. Um, simplifying that, those brackets out. Um, now, I, I almost finished there, but it wants me to have an A on the outside and just the root 3 on the inside. Well, if I take out the factor of 4 in this, I'm going to have uh, 4, and that's going to be 2 minus root 3. Um, and then I can basically take this 4 outside. So in effect, I'm going to have root 4, root 2 minus root 3. OK, and then once I've got that, I can therefore simplify that to be AB equals 2, 2 minus root 3. OK, and there we go. Um, so I think that the easiest way to tackle this question, like I said, is, is to kind of have a sketch and then kind of take it from there. OK, the next part of the question, again, is probably easiest in terms of a sketch. Calculate AOB in terms of in terms of pi. Okay, so once again, probably start with this sketch here. Um, actually, think about what this is going to be. Well, if this is theta, and there's going to be a here, and there's o the origin. And B will be somewhere before that. And that's going to, so if that's theta 1, then this here, that's not a very good sketch. I think we'll possibly try that one again. Okay, so this is A. B might be somewhere like that. That's let's call that theta two, and let's call that theta one, and let's say that's zero. So basically, the angle that it's asking us to find is AOB, 
Now the way we can do that is to find out this theta here and then take away this theta here. So if we do theta 1, take away theta 2, the bit that's left will be the angle between A, the origin and B. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to have to try and find. So find out theta 1, find out theta 2 and so on. Um, to do this we're just going to convert uh, from Cartesian into polar. So Z1 and if we sketch our triangle, we've got this is 2, and this is also 2, and this is theta here. So therefore we're going to get tan theta is uh, 2 over 2, which is 1. Therefore theta is going to be pi over 4. Now technically it's going to be negative pi over 4 because um, we're going downwards. Um, but for the purposes of this question, because both angles will be negative, um, it, it doesn't actually matter in this particular case here. So we'll count this theta 1 that we've sketched on the diagram as a pi over 4. And let's find out what z2 equals. So z2, we've gone across by 1, down by root 3. So therefore tan theta is equal to root 3 over 1 and therefore and we call this theta 2 uh, pi over 3 again we won't worry about the negatives even though technically it is a negative angle um, so therefore the angle between them is just going to be theta 1 take away theta 2. So the angle between is going to be pi over 4 take away pi over 3 uh, which is pi over 12.